Okay, today we're doing some commentary or some reactions on this game system. Dead Rising 1, the original Xbox 360. Which is about zombies? Yeah, and Frank West. Who's Frank West? He's the main character you play as. He's a photojournalist. Oh, okay. Now, I'm playing this on an already, like, done thing with everything on it, because for anybody that's ever played Dead Rising, you know how hard it is to start from the beginning. So we're just going to start at a new game. Yeah, the mall. Yeah. Willamette. Colorado Willamette, I think. Yeah, Colorado. You're at this mall for like three days before the military arrives or, or your helicopter arrives. So that's where the mountains are. Yeah. Too loud. Too loud. So what do you think about this so far? This isn't the outfit he usually wears. I just this is from my last playthrough. What's he taking pictures of? He's a, a freelance photojournalist. He take he takes pictures of like events going on around the world and all that. You mentioned something about research for a story. That's right. Got to check if something big's happening. You know where a little town like that? Of course they wouldn't, because the government wanted to cover this one up. What do you think about their mouths? Their mouths are weird. Yeah, that's early video game three. Their mouths back then just kind of did like this. They just went in and out. They didn't like go up and down. They just went in and out. It was like Ozzy Osbourne's mouth. Yeah, I think his name's Ned. That's actually a reference to an achievement in this game called Zombie Genocider. You get the super overpowered weapon called the... Look at his nose. Ha, funny. National Guard. Standing there to make sure nobody gets in. Is there a zombie out right there or something? Yeah. Right, this is just the opening, like, cutscene to the game. But there's nothing really to do at the beginning part here except it shows you how to do the, the picture mechanics. But we're going to try and do a full series on this of playing through Dead Rising and all that. And like I said earlier, this it just essentially shows you how the mechanics of the camera work. I can't remember exactly. It's about a minute or two. I think it's A. No, it's B to zoom in. A to zoom in. Okay. X is to take pictures. Look at how slow the propellers are going on the helicopter. They are like that when you film it. Uh oh, zombies. Zombies. Oh what yeah, you we, do? I took a picture because when you take pictures. Well, it's, what you're, it's supposed to show you how to use the camera at the beginning of the game. They're giving you points for taking pictures? Yeah, because it's because uh, he's a photojournalist. He's supposed to be taking pictures of what's going on so that he can show the people on the outside world what's going on. And this guy's fending for himself on top of a car. I'm not going to spoil it a little bit. It doesn't go very well for him. Is this what you came to take pictures of? Sure. Poor guy. He's getting eaten. Look at his ankle, he's getting his ankle beaten. And he's gone. Look at all those zombies at the bus. Playground. And they don't you don't really see much of this town in this game. It's not until Dead Rising 4 you actually see more of the town. And I gotta admit, I'm not a big fan of Dead Rising 4, but they at least did it get it like pretty on par to what it kinda looks like. So what caused the town to be like this? Um, uh, well, originally, it's the zombie outbreak happened in a place called Santa Cabeza, and a guy named Carlito, yeah, Keys, I was trying to remember, um, he got mad that the government tried to cover up because it was the American government who caused the outbreak to happen in Santa Cabeza, and so he got mad and brought it to America to essentially show Americans what oh yeah watch this you see that gas station right there it just blew up 
to take a picture of explosions. Cool. <laughs> Essentially, they're just trying to show you right now, like, the chaos that Willamette has kind of fallen into. Honestly, as you can see, there's not many zombies actually in the town right now. Like I said earlier, Dead Rising 4, this place is way more overrun than Dead Rising 4. This game came out in like 2006, I want to say. There's a person on top of a roof here trying to fend themselves off in the zombies. The stupid part is, you, if you don't realize it, but some of these player models, like her and the other guy we were seeing on top of the car, they re they uh, reappear later as different characters. Did they ever explain how they got like this? Actually, no. But yeah, yeah, they do. It's uh, these queens that are like wasps that turn people into zombies and all that, but they never explain exactly, like, everything about it. She's trying to fend for herself. She throws the... Which, you honestly, you should be able to do. But she did run out of bullets. Yeah. And... Zombie falls. And she falls. Oh. Okay. Yeah. This is a pretty gruesome game, man. Well, I mean, it gets a lot more gruesome later on. Well, the zombies push her off. Yeah. Okay, and we're about to get to the mall, the main center of town, where we can spend 95% of this game. 100% of this game. Okay. Honestly, I had a lot of fun playing this game, honestly, because it's one of those games that gives you a lot to do. Like, you're not just like, oh, one and done and never play this again. Like, you got, like, a lot to do. And there's the mall. Look at the whole town. It's just, like, empty. Look at how many zombies there are. I don't know ever do anything with that layer in the game. It's Frank. Frank West. Oh no, it's the army helicopter. You actually get to shoot that helicopter down later in the game. It's very hard to do. Oh, that's why that briefcase never reached. Honestly, they make it like that briefcase was supposed to be important at the beginning of this game, but like later on in the game you'll realize that it's not important at all. Like, they don't even mention it ever again. One thing I don't really understand about this is like, he's about to jump off the helicopter. That's not the part that I don't understand. The part I don't understand is, is later on, the helicopter kind of just goes on top of a building in town and just sits there and waits for Frank to come, to show up on the third day to come get him. But he's being chased by, like, three army helicopters. So how did the army helicopters just let him land on a roof and just stay there for, like, three days? Because they, obviously they don't want him there. Hello there. And here's Carlito, the main bad guy the whole game. You're the reporter, aren't you? Yeah. No. You came alone. Yeah. I don't remember his voice sounding like this. You know. They look weird looking. Yeah, on. it's the early player model. What's going on around here anyway? You came by helicopter, didn't you? How's the Indian dude there? Is he he's not Indian. He's uh, Hispanic. Well, what you doing here? He's the one that called him there. He's the one that called him master to come there. Yeah. I doubt the military would quarantine the entire area. He's also the main bad guy of the whole game. Is that guy? Yeah. His name. That's Carlito Keys right there. Cool. There's uh, something else I can't put my finger on. What's up? Doesn't sound like civil disobedience. It's too quiet. <laughs> Almost as if everyone's dead. Everyone's already dead. Yeah. So why don't you just tell me already? What's going on? You know what's going on? You're done. This, my friend, is hell. 
When you first play this game, you kind of just get this feeling that he's like going to be a psychopath later he's on in the game. Crap, yeah, man. but you really don't get the impression that he's supposed to be the main bad guy throughout the whole no, game. No, just some guy. Yeah, he's just because there's a lot of people like this in this game. I usually skip this first part because you I don't... You're scared of me because I'm very serious in the guys. Yeah, but like you can see at the top here, I'm level 50 with like 12 health blocks. That's because, like I said earlier, I'm doing this from a already done save file. Because yeah. if I wasn't doing this, if I was doing this from a fresh save file, I would be like, take twice as long to play the game. Because I would be like so low on health, have What's so... What's a fresh trip, whatever you say? A fresh start uh, profile would just be me at level 1, Definitely. trying to level up to like level 50 again. Because level 50 is the max cap on this and the majority of the Dead Rising games. Also an interesting feature here is, you see that little button here that says save by this right here? Yeah. The only way to save in this game is you have to go to each save station. There's one in here, and around the mall, it's bathrooms. Where's he at now? He's in the uh, the security room of um, the mall. But this is one of... Also, if you ever want to like quit in the middle of the game, you just hit end after you save it, and you can just go back to the main menu. I didn't know that for the longest time. And there's also these thing called PP stickers. Like, you see how the little meter at the bottom keeps changing in yeah. numbers? It's because there's these things called PP stickers around. If you take a picture of them, you get extra points, which helps you level up faster and all that. Cool. But obviously, I don't need it. I'm already max level. What's it say on the back of his shirt? Willamette. What's that? It, it's the mall we're in and the town. Oh. oh, this is always something I forget is this little cutscene here. Cause I think I skip it half the time. You just kind of keep that going. Yeah. This lady here never returns or is never mentioned again. Like by NPCs, man. They are NPCs, but most of the time in Dead Rising games, when they show people, they pretty much like have an importance. Their, their teeth are like corn. Yeah. Most of the time in these games, when someone's introduced, they have an importance to the story or just in general an importance. But like mm -hmm. in the first game here, they show a lot of people that just never have any importance after this. Oh, yeah, wait a minute. Let me change back to the default Frank. If for anybody that doesn't know how to do that, you just come over here under the stairs, hit B, boom. Yeah. This is what Frank changes did. clothes. Yeah, this is what he normally looks like. Yeah, nice just, yeah. There's all he's also got other outfits. These blue lockers, they're free DLC. That if you don't, you get a whole bunch of outfits. But also, outfit wise, if you do achievements, you get these things over here. These Willamette shopping bags right here. You can change clothes through these two. Some of them are better than others, but some of them are just dumb. Like hat, like there's a police officer hat, which is honestly kind of dumb, in my opinion. But there's also like the Mega Man outfit, but you don't get the hat. But here's two very important things for the rest of the game right here. The, the, the laser sword and the real Mega Buster. These are like, if you play the game with only these, you'll pretty much just beat the whole game. But you have to do the zombie genocider to get the real Mega Buster, and you have to do five day survivor to get the laser sword, which means you have to play the game for for seven day survivor. You have to play the game for seventeen or well, fourteen hours in survival mode, which is very hard to do because it's just waiting around for your health to go down. It's very boring, but you have to wake up super early to do it. But it's kind of worth it at the end, mostly to get the laser sword. Mm -hmm. This hallway I'm going down, you never go down this hallway ever again. Because it gets w welded off later. And here's our first kind of look inside the mall that we're actually going to be in most of the time. This is going to be Entrance Plaza. Honestly, I always wondered what this game would have been like if they had done it where, like, the mall's kind of empty for, like, the first couple missions you do, because you can see it's all barricaded. Uh, the front doors are barricaded so the zombies won't get in. Mm -hmm. I always wondered what this game would have been like if they had kept it like this for, like, maybe, like, the first half, not half, but, like, the first couple missions of the game, like, just walking around, kind of just getting the idea of being in the mall. It's, to me, it feels like nothing's going on anyway. It's just a bunch of Well, this story. is the build-up part here. She looks, what's wrong with her mouth? It's 2006. 
Is there something on her mouth? Or no, it's just that's just the way it looks. That lady is going to be a problem in a second. You'll see why. Here's Isabella's sister. I mean, Car Carlito's sister, Isabella Keys. And obviously Frank has a thing for her. Because he's just Are that kind of guy. Community? Um, no, it's, the importance of the game uh, stems from Santa Cabeza, which is a Hispanic place. What do you think about the zombies in this game so far? What would you they call them? Zombies. What would you call them? Dead. This would be way before. I don't know. The comic books might have been out. It's just a term. I know. Yeah, no, for now they are. Until Dead Rising 2 when they become super zombies. Like, so, like the other movie, World War Z. And warm bodies. I like they got braces on. Look at the hair. That's just not like he's got braces. It's just the, the teeth, the way they made him look. Like I said, this is the first time they ever made a game like this. I can't remember. It wasn't Blue Castle, because they didn't make this one. They made two. And Catcom Vancouver. Oh yeah, you see all these people here? Like, here's the lady at the beginning of the game here that's screaming about her dog. Um, these are two randos. None of these people ever again make it important, and you'll see why. But for now, we gotta come over here and trigger a cutscene. And we meet another important character to the backstory of this game, Dr. Barnaby. I can't remember what his first name is. I think they say it in Dead Rising 4. You! you. Stop right there. Do you have is this how all old people act now these days? Why did you summon me to this place? What are you planning? Would you come teeth down? Falling I don't even know what you're talking about. You see, like, his teeth are falling out. Yeah. Because they didn't know how to space things back then. Because the inside of people's mouths looked weird back then. Oh, what the? I actually never noticed the watch on his wrist in cutscene. This is huge. And this is why that lady becomes a problem. Watch what she does. She's doing all this for her dog. The dog's a zombie. Actually, in Dead Rising, Chop Two Drop, the Wii version of this game, they actually do incorporate zombie do animals. Dogs Is that dog characters. a zombie or just a regular dog? As, in this game, it's just normal. It's not a zombie at all. And, yeah, and this is how the outbreak in the mall happens. This is how all the zombies get in. Because this one lady, this one lady wanted to go for her dog. Dang. Yeah. This one lady wanted to go for her dog. That's the reason why the whole mall gets infested now. Feels like David. And there's Brad. Get out of here! I how many zombies there are. Kind of reminds you of Dawn of the Dead. Cause then they no, were who went to fight out a zombie and a mummy? Uh, probably, I don't know. Anyway, this is the reason why these people don't make an appearance ever again. I don't know. Because they all died. Dude, I think a zombie will get beat. Okay, well, stop that. It's called which mummy it is. If the mummy is from like... Oh, the Brandon Fraser mummy? Oh, yeah, definitely yeah. could beat a zombie. But if it's a mummy, like a... Regular mummy, you know, rap, and it's just a body. Just... Like the, uh, the Bella Lugosi mummy. That it would just sucked. be a zombie. It would just that be guy a zombie. Look, look at it. They're eating it, dude. All it would be is just a zombie in a uh... cloth. Yeah. But now, the... if, it's the, if it's the zombies from World War Z versus the mummy. Oh, yeah. That, the ooh, they Frazier? definitely beat the mummy. No, and, and, the, and the Frazier, Brandon Fraser mummy, who, which one will win? The World War Z zombies, man. You really think so? Because the mummy in Brandon Fraser movie has, like, powers. Yeah, but he didn't really, like,. He, he had to build up his power. Like, he had to rebuild his body. There's Jesse, and there's Otis. There's Otis on there? Yeah, right there. The Don't guy in the blue jacket. The Does Otis live? Yeah. I don't know. He lives in this game because at know. the end of it, he takes all the survivors that you say. Oh, yeah, you have to like, get survivors in the game, but it's very difficult. Um, he takes any survivors you save and gets them out of the mall. But he does die eventually because he's old. 
but we don't know when he dies. But in Dead Rising 3, you actually end up at his funeral at the beginning of the game. Yeah. Because it, apparently his funeral was taking place in Los Perdidos. How did he end up, the guy, the reporter, end up with a coat? Oh, it's because it was a, an achievement clothing oh, item really? that I got. I was wearing it in my last playthrough. Yeah, they're not smart enough to get in the air ducts, but they're smart enough to get in an elevator. You'll see later on what I'm talking about. Brad and Jesse, the girl that he's about to talk to in a second, are part of Homeland Security. Honestly, at the beginning of the game, I kind of do feel for Frank. Because he's just trying to... He's being thrown into this brand Who's new... this girl? This is Jesse. Anyway, but Frank is kind of just getting thrown into this all brand new, not having a single clue what's going on, and everybody acts like he should just already know what's going on. And it's like, that's not really fair to Frank, not gonna lie. You really seem to know what you're doing. Who are you guys, anyway? And what are you? Barnaby. I took that one near the entrance. Her? She's only a security. Yeah, and the, the other guy is Brad. He's Brad the Black dude? Yeah, been in the yellow shirt. Uh, hey, we're not done talking yet. Hey, yes, we are. <laughs> Just who are you guys? Batman. Oh, we're Homeland Security. I'm Jesse. The man you saw earlier is Brad. That's all I'm authorized to tell you. Is that guy a terrorist or something? They think everybody is. Well, in this game, it is an, an act of terror. They don't know who's who. They don't know that. They think Dr. Barnaby is the what one. What did you come. say? Some wasp gave him? It's, uh, they were experimenting. They were trying to mass produce meat. Huh? They were trying to mass produce meat in Santa Cabeza by genetically altering cattle. Gotcha. I don't know how it got into, like, wasp. I don't know how that happened. They never explained that. And then. The zombie outbreak uh, happened in Santa Cabeza. It broke out and spread everywhere. Killed everybody in Santa Cabeza, but the government covered it up and wrote it off as a... I think it was a gang? Or, um... The, what, what's, what's the Mexican gang called again? M13. No, um... Cartel? Cartel. I can, or drug something. I can't remember what exactly. They'll explain it in a second, but I can't remember exactly what it was. But they try to write it off as just some, like, drug war or something that killed everybody in Santa Cabeza. Mm -hmm. And so Carlito got mad at that. Came to him. He infected 50 children. You'll learn that in um, the, um, what's it called? The, uh, it's the, it's the thing that you play after the game's over. Um, overtime, that's what it's called. And that you'll learn that he infected 50 children and put them across the United States. That's Otis. That's a good name. Yeah. I like that name, Otis. He's actually a pretty good guy, but he's quite aggravating when it comes to him constantly calling you on this little walkie-talkie thing he just gave us. And this is how we're going to get in and out of the mall. The what is that, the air ducts? Yeah, you, you go through the roof vents. Yeah, I'll make sure they don't fall through. You won't. I'm just going to get through the first act and then... How long does that take? I don't know. You don't want your video to be too long. Well, 30 minutes should be good enough. Yeah, yeah seven more minutes. Yeah. Look at his hair. He looks it's like, like a porcupine. He looks like the guy from Bones at, uh... Uh, Booth? Yeah, he looks like Booth. John Wilkes Booth? What's Man. on his arm? The Mega Buster. Sad. It's a Mega... It's the Mega... Oh, to so his zombies with it. It shoots plasma energy. And here's your first introduction to Survivors. You kind of just talk to them, and they'll eventually just join you. This is just kind of like an introduction to them. Because they get a lot worse after this. Like, some people want things. Some people want you to carry them. Some people want you to do things. But there's two survivors immediately, straight off the bat. It's Jeff and Natalie Myers, I believe. The first time I ever played this game, I didn't know Natalie was over there. Because look at this. When you go out, this is the area you come from. I immediately see this over here because he's running around and talking. So I didn't know you were supposed to... But I just got him immediately and just went brought him back. But, like, here's Natalie. 
all the way over here and all the way down. I didn't even know this area over here existed the mm -hmm. first time I played the game. Essentially, you just gotta bring Jeff over here. She'll get excited that her, her husband's with her. Is here. There we go. You just watch them reunite. There's a little... Why do they bump into each other? It's because they're hugging each other. Well, all that because they're also running. But this kind of just... It's also an introduction to, like, PP. Moments you could take pictures of. Come on. You have the same glasses. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And after you get her, you get... Okay. Uh, yeah, also another stupid thing you'll notice I keep dodging is because in this game, it's forward forward on the thumbstick to dodge, which is kind of dumb. Are those supposed to be people online? No, these are like... Just, yeah, these are pre-programmed people. You gotta wait for them to get on this block, and... Boom. Now you can save both of them. And this is what happens every time you save survivors. They give you a little, like, dialogue and tells you one of them and all that. And essentially what that does is it just gives you more PP points throughout the game to help you level up. If you ever try to go to 50 days, uh, 50, all 50 survivors, then you're just going to essentially hate yourself for doing it because it is a half one and a half. I had to do it without doing the story because you kind of have no choice. Why does he look like that? It's showing you some of the skills he can do, the somersault. Oh, yeah, here's the, the calls I'm talking about that Otis will call you about. They get pretty annoying after a while because he'll call you about almost every 10 seconds almost. I don't know. He can't attack while he's doing it. And here's that move he was uh, that you saw in there. It's the somersault kick. <laughs> Roadhouse. He's got a, like a, a whole set of moves. I think it's under status. Yep. Skills. Okay. He's got jump kick, which is just kicking zombie ride, where you just walk on top of him. Kick back. I think it's when you get grabbed, flying dodge, and so on and so on. He's got a whole bunch of moves he's got. My favorite one is just jump kick because it helps like clear paths for you. And this will be another cutscene. This game is heavily story influenced, but once you get, especially at the beginning here, but once you get into the middle of it, it's when more exciting stuff happens. Like when you meet Psycho. I, you know, we could probably do Cletus, I believe, after this. Cletus. Yeah, he's, a, he's the first technical psychopath you can fight. He's not the first actual psychopath, but... The first one you technically meet is Carlito, but technically the first one you can actually fight is... Um... Cletus. The slack-jawed yokel. Give me the gun. Oh, I don't think yeah. zombies. Well, I don't think they had zombie-infested malls in mind when they wrote those yeah. regulations. Kid. I bet you that in the government we, because I know we do have a zombie survival protocol in the, in the military, but I'm pretty, yeah, that's going to be a, a reoccurring thing about him talking about, I, I've covered wars, you know. Um, but I'm pretty sure every form of government agency has a protocol for zombies. I'm pretty sure. Look, after I'm through helping you, you and I are going to have a nice little Chat. I don't think Frank ever actually gets a. That she looks more realistic than I am. Than yeah. Him. Why is that? And this is how this game is set up in cases here. There's eight cases in total, I think. And an over the facts and an overtime. My ball. Colby's movie land is. I don't really. I didn't really go in there that much. Except in, um, and you, you spend 70 hours in this mall. And here's your first actual thing into the mall. Let's okay. finally find some zombies. If I remember correctly, I believe Kent. No, I know he's at noon, but he's another psychopath, but I can't remember if he's immediately up here already. Okay, yeah, no, we'll go deal with Cletus immediately then. The psychopaths really are the best part of this game. Oh, wait a minute, I'm gonna go fight Cleveland and need help. Yeah, here, here's the number one place to go in this game for health in the story, because there's this cooler over here that gives you an infinite number of OJ. 
Like, oh, yeah, I've seen him drinking it. This is like your best source of health in this game is OJ. But later on in Dead Rising, in a future Dead Rising game, they, um... <laughs> zombie actually bit him? Yeah. Is he gonna change into a zombie? No. They didn't immediately turn you into a zombie because it'd be a very short game if you... Because you get constantly grappled and bit by zombies in this game. Which at the end... I don't know if I should spoil it or not. I'm not... Okay, no, I'm not gonna spoil it. But there's a thing at the end of the game that's gonna be kind of dumb when you hear it. Like, of course. <laughs> Faith Crusher. That's a pretty okay move right there. They, It's better in Dead Rising 2 with Smash. Where it's just called Smash where you just grab them and throw them. On here, you actually have to be beside them to do it. Welcome to whoop, Leisure Park. I forgot this is called Leisure Park. This is kind of like your in-between place. And if you do this right, you can jump up. Okay, I didn't do it right. You can jump up on this thing or you can do it right. Oh, there we go. And on top of this little roof here. We're going to go ahead and fight Cleto because he's technically the first psychopath you fight in this game. Okay. He's also one of the most aggravating because he's, he's the only psychopath in this game to have a shotgun. What are you driving to? A school? No, this is a mall. This is the middle part of a mall. I thought you already went to the mall. No, it's a, it's a whole... Here, it's I'll show mall. you the map. It's a different mall. I'll show you the map. Oh, the mall goes around it? Yeah, you get a whole, it's a whole park in the middle, kind of like a walk-around area. It's a big park. Mall. Yeah, it's a big mall. It's the only place to really do anything here. This is what they essentially said. Football tackle. You rarely use this. I rarely use this move. But, um... Uh, for some reason in Dead Rising games, they made it a tendency that there's always a construction area going on. Mm -hmm. For this game, it's the North Plaza here. In Dead Rising 2, it's the South Plaza. In Dead Rising 3, it's, um... I think it's around the airport. Wait a minute, did I? I think I just... Yeah, I passed him. He'd be down here. Yeah, this is where Cletus would be. Clearing my way out of zombies, and zombies have got me. I don't walk in time great over this road. Okay, we should. This should give me click. Okay, I guess he's not here yet. Oh, might as well get a gun while I'm here. Yep, that's a cool gun shot. Come on, give me. Forget how you. Okay, let's just go behind the desk and get a shotgun. Why not? Because he's going to be aggravating later on. Okay, so we got to go help Brad out instead. Okay, zombie. As you can see here, this is why they didn't make it where, like, one bite and you're a zombie. It's because you get grappled quite often in this game. GPS zombie Rider. Okay. I think it'd be more beneficial if I just go back outside to get to the food court. Let me pop an OJ real quickly. To stay healthy. Okay, come on. Frank! Frank! Oh yeah, now Kent's available. Come on. In the call. In the call. In the call. In the call, dude! This is why he's kind of aggravating, because he won't stop talking. <laughs> there we go. And got grappled by a zombie. Okay, I thought Cletus would have already been there. I think you have to do the first case before he shows up. Okay, food court is over there. Yeah, you can spend a lot of time in this game, especially at the beginning here. Just going back and forth through Leisure Park. After Adam shows up and you save his survivor, you get this shortcut between Wonderland Plaza and um, Paradise Plaza, um, which saves you a lot of time when playing this. That's how I ended up doing it half the time. After well, after I do the thing here, we can stop it. 
Honestly, one of the things I am glad that they did for future Dead Rising games, especially 3 and 4, was they added more vehicles so that you didn't have to walk everywhere. Because on here, you have to kind of just walk everywhere in order to get... Yeah, the zombie gun like that you don't have to worry about too much. Oh yeah, there's a better weapon in here called the uh, Mini Chainsaw. It's like the er best earliest weapon you can get. And I prefer it to every weapon in the game, even the real Mega Buster. I know, here's your first encounter. Here's your technical second, but first encounter with Carlito as a bad guy. In the food court. You rarely come in here. To fight this dude? Yeah, you rarely come in here. He's got a P90. You, you can't use this though, which is the stupid part. Weird looking guy. There's Brad. Brad knows he's a bad guy. Yeah. Jesse? <laughs> Covered war, you know. All right, I'll cover you from here. You need to stick to the shadows. Try to get close to the target, okay? And what am I supposed to do when I get close? Shoot him. Well, the best solution would be to shoot the guy. But if you can't do that, keep him busy dodging. Your Honestly, one of the weirdest things about this game is when you fight psychopaths, you're constantly shooting them or hitting them with like chainsaws or weapons in general. But when they die, there's usually a cutscene that will play, and they're usually either just stumbling away or just doing some, or just fall dead anyway, or get killed by something else. And it's like, well, like, why was the point of me doing all that? Oh, come on. I think the first time I ever fought, because there's a secret weapon that's not really a secret. But I think the first time I ever fought Carlito, I used the katana against them, which is a very powerful weapon to use. And you have to come up here and shoot them. Watch how fast it is with this gun right here. I keep forgetting it's not that button. Did you guys shoot him? Okay, I'm kind of missing a little bit. Okay. I think he's too far away. I think it's, oh, there we go. He got hit by one and died. That's how powerful that gun is. Let's cut the play, then we'll cut it off. And you see, like, I shot him with, like, a plasma ball, and no, he just... Wow. Yeah, and he's alive, and he just disappears into the ceiling like he's Batman. Michael Keaton Batman over here. Where did he go over there? The ceiling. There's nowhere to go. I don't know. <laughs> but this is where we start getting a little bit more explanation in the game of what's actually going on. Well, thanks for your help. The name's Brad. I'm Frank West. Photo journalist. And right now, I'd rather have an explanation than your thanks, Brad. I mean, anybody would. No offense. Sorry. I've got nothing to tell you. Look, I don't know what Jesse told you, but as far as I'm concerned, we're through working together. So sure. They say that they're through working together, but like the rest of the game, you two will end up working together a lot. You guys are looking for someone here, aren't, aren't you? you? Where did you... <laughs> Who is that? Where did you tell me? <laughs> a bit of a jerk, honestly, sometimes, but sometimes, and honestly, I give him a little bit more slack in the beginning of this game, because he really is fresh to all this, he really has no idea what's going on. You're one hell of a journalist, aren't you, Frank? Well, he's gotta be. A hot-headed, underhanded, hot-shot paparazzi yep. with nothing better to do than to invade people's privacy. That's exactly sums up Frank West right there. <laughs> you got a point. 
their lips just push forward there every time they talk. Watch their lips when they talk. Their lips just go forward at the hip. You win, Frank. Yeah, it looks like they just go upside up and down. Let's yeah. Together. Beep. Jesse and I are DHS agents. And yes, we are looking for the man in that picture. You're with Homeland Security. Is that guy a terrorist or something? We don't. Well, yeah, where else would it? You know, he's only been one other place in the game. So do I have your permission to cover this story? Or not. Or not. <sighs> you know, yeah, that's not... He's more, at the beginning of the game, he's more... Okay. Alright. We're gonna end it here for now. And we'll come back to this what did, later. Tell them what you just did. Oh, um, that was... Case 1-1 one, one, and Case 1-2. Yeah, because they're set up in multiple parts, as you can see. Uh, next time, we'll do Case 1-3. And this is... Dead Rising 1 for the Xbox okay. 360. See you later.